Okay, uh, what I'm going to show here real quick is sort of the workflow, the beginning of the process of doing uh, analysis on an embedded device. And um, I just recently gave a workshop, and the whole purpose is not just to show the tools that make this easier, but to kind of give you an idea of the workflow, because this kind of gives you a tempo that makes it really easy to quickly jump into different devices and not feel so intimidated. So here we have uh, one of the example targets from the workshop, which is a Fritzbox router, very common router. And the first stage was just taking pictures in, of, the, of the box and then opening it up and pulling it out and taking pictures of the different sides of the board. So then what I did is I imported them into GIMP. And here you see uh, the top layer and the bottom layer just you know, this, this, these are the layers as, as they came out of the camera. And the first stage is probably going to be aligning these layers because I'm going to use this, um, this file for uh, both a little bit of tracing uh, for basic stuff and keeping notes of electrical characteristics for debug headers or pins on a chip and things like this that I discover along the way. So the first thing is to just align the layers because uh, it can be an advantage if you have them aligned and quickly jump from top to bottom and see where a certain trace that goes through a certain via uh, heads. Uh, so let's take one layer. I mean, the antenna, if you look at the antenna there, one of them needs to be flipped, so let's flip it. Okay, so it's flipped. And it needs to be moved a little bit. Let's move the transparent so we can see how much. Okay. Yeah, that's good enough. And so you can see they don't really, uh, the edges don't really perfectly align. And if we go up here, let's go up to 100. You can see the edges don't align. So to align the edges, I'm going to take off the top layer, and then I'm going to use the guides uh, to give me where the edges are, and then we're going to sort of drag and skew um, the other layer so that it matches. So I just put this on each edge. That's the top left. And here we have the bottom left. So we can see how far we have to go. Okay, because once we use this skew tool, we won't be able to see the bottom layer anymore. So uh, now we're going to skew this layer. We need to pull this up to the top. So we just pull this edge. And as we do this, we'll have to come back and check each egg, edge, and this will take like uh, a minute. Okay, this one goes all the way out here. It doesn't have to be exact right now because we have to come back once we get in the neighborhood. This one will take us down. So now we check them all again. So you can see it already moved a bit. Good enough. One last check. Yeah, all good. So we hit transform.
let's check this edge. Yeah. Okay, so now we can see that they align pretty well. So they pretty much align perfectly, which is nice because now if we put transparency, you can see the traces and the vias and where they go. And we can check our alignment here. Let's see what we have here. With these uh, large through holes, you can see they pretty much perfectly align. And uh, this lets us do interesting stuff like mapping uh, traces only in a very basic way. So you can take let's see, we can take this area and we go and select the brush tool. And now we're on a new layer on the top and we can just sort of click and follow through this zero ohm resistor up to this via. And we take this off and see where the via goes and we see it goes to this pad. Or actually probably all of these probably oh it actually goes to this pad and it goes out underneath these resistors so we put there again Oops. I see it goes out here okay so that's the basic idea. You also add like chip names and things like this, and uh, I would add, you know, names of pins as I discover them. I've already done some of this in another uh, file, so I can kind of show you how it's useful. So um, these grids, for example, are useful for figuring out which vias probably are associated with which um, oops, with which pins are from the actual chip. So if we look at the bottom layer, based on um, based on the size of the chip and, and I knew the, the footprint and dimensions of you know, X and Y number of pins, we can see which vias, vias are associated with which uh, pin. Uh, but let's take that off for a moment, and I'll show you something else that was useful with this target. So if we go to the Xilinx chip, uh, sometimes I like to, if I have the footprint, I like to bring whatever details I find from the data sheet into the into a separate layer here. So. Here I brought in the, the pin details uh, for the Xilinx footprint, and already we have TDO, TCK, TMS, and then over here, over here is TDI. So these are the JTAG pins, so we know it's, it's these three and this one, and so we can already start to map them. So a really simple thing is here I've mapped uh, VCC ground and the JTAG pins, uh, but you can start to follow the traces so this is the actual trace for those pins. And uh, already we see that one of them is attached to this pad. Now this pad has, uh, it looks different from the rest of the pads. It has some solder on it already. So that already gives us a clue. If this one JTAG pad has solder, perhaps the other JTAG or other pads relating to JTAG should also have solder on them. And if we search around the board, now keep in mind there's four JTAG pins. So if we search around the board, the only place that we find um, pads with solder on them are here. So here's three more, so that makes four total. So we already have, just from uh, visual analysis of the characteristics of the PCB, we already have a very good target. Uh, or idea of where JTAG is. So this is why it, it can be useful to, to do this. In addition to having, you know, more clear information with traces, if you had a target 
that had a lot more traces, this one doesn't have that many, then being able to look at both layers at the same time would make it very easy to figure out where things are going. So that's it. Hopefully it was helpful. Ciao.